We are live from Cologne, Germany once again. The beautiful city of Cologne to continue the World Championship Series. Welcome, this is the Premier League. Joining me on the desk once again, we have Sam, also known as Bling, and Johan, also known as Todd. We, together, are the Blues Brothers, bringing you the World Championship Series tonight. We had a great day yesterday. Welcome back for day number two. Sam, feeling more comfortable into the zone today? Feeling more comfortable. Had a nice meal last night. Made me relax a little bit. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be here for day, day two. A lot of Zerg action. That doesn't scare me. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. That's the same thoughts for Todd as well. He loves the Zerg days. Uh, yeah, because you? we're not playing, so... You can enjoy the matches tonight. Yeah, always. I always do. Uh, of course, we're in the round of 32. For some of you tuning in for the very, very, very first time, this is the Premier League. We have three different stages that we're going to be going through. Currently in the round of 32, we've completed four groups of the round of 32 in America. We completed our first one last night in Cologne, Germany, and have three more to go. Six additional players will join the 10 that are already qualified to play at the season finals, which we are going to Poland with. The best 16 players will travel over there to compete for the chance to be a Premier League champion for Season 3 to join the likes of Polt and Hydra from Season 1 and Season 2. But it's not just that. There is also a lot of other things on the line, boys. We have prize money. We have points on the line. Uh, let's have a look, closer look at the prize money because this is something I think some people take for granted. Each season, $217,000 each season of the World Championship Series. That's a lot of dollar available for these players, Johan. I think we should ask Blink, because he's the one who just made the jump from players here to analysts. So how does that make you feel when you see this How does it compare to being an analyst? <laughs> <laughs> You're just gonna laugh. Well, everyone goes on about that cast of money, and I'm not quite there just yet. But uh, <laughs> th there's no denying that that's a, that's a good sum of money. And these players, it's only the round of 32, and it's only going to increase the more they progress in the tournament. So, yeah, they've they've got to be happy where they're at right now. And of course, the WCS points, the backbone of each year within the World Championship Series, as you can see. We have Hero, who is at the top of the ranking still, and of course is 100% confirmed to play at the Global Finals at the end of the year. Currently, TY slipped into position number 16, but today is all about 4GG, Kane, Zanster, and Ayasonu, the four players playing today. More importantly, 4GG, who sadly hasn't been able to play at the Global Finals in 2013, 2014. You know, he's not getting any younger and today is a big opportunity for this guy considering where he was last season Todd. Yeah he, he used to be one of the names in WCS that we consider to basically be guaranteed to make it to I think top eight or top four whereas now he's he's shown a lot of weakness as of late that last season in particular that one's lost that one lost to Kung Fu Panda I feel like he's gonna be like the one one of the big key points on his resume like forever and he needs to, I guess, recover from this with some good big wins, but is he, is he playing that much better? I guess we're going to find out. Yeah, today's a very important day for him to try and get that big win. He needs it today. Let's take a look at the groups that are remaining in the round of 32. Only three groups left this season for the round of 32. We've completed five, as you can see already, having a, a big, you know, variety of players going through from all over the world, lots of different races coming through. We've got our three Protoss players, the least represented through to the round of 16, but F, G, and H are the players that we're looking at over the next couple of days. Of course, 4GG, a big name for today. Snoot, a big name for tomorrow. And we will reveal who Hitman is in Group G tomorrow. And of course, Bling's favorite and the hometown favorite, Tilo, gets to play uh, on Friday. Looking forward to that. Looking very, <laughs> looking very excited. Uh I am excited and I'm looking forward to it as well. Um, and I feel like I'm, uh, I'm, I'm becoming friends with the German crowd, especially after yesterday and my <laughs> prediction with Gung Fu. Uh, yeah. <laughs> They're making me feel very welcome, Sean. As a Brit should be over here, mate. As a Brit should be. It's time to take a close look at Group F, as that is the group of the day.
Group F is the truly international group that we have here. Players from all over the world coming together to play in Cologne, Germany. What are your thoughts on this group overall, Todd? Is there a massive favorite for you, a player that shouldn't be in this group, a player that's going to get smashed up today? I think I would say 4GG, uh, maybe, and Kane, unless Zenster. Like, Zenster is pretty good, though. He shouldn't be underestimated. I feel like the only real, like, outsider or the guy that's really going to struggle here is Ayasunu. I don't know. It's, I feel like it's a little bit hard to give him any credit in terms of the games that he's played so far in this tournament. He really hasn't impressed me much, but who knows? Maybe. Well, the first match of the night is going to be Zenster versus Kane. We've got a lot to talk about that in a couple of moments. Second match, Ayasunu versus 4GG. Uh, your thoughts on this group here, Sam? Um, I think it's an interesting one because 4GG hasn't been playing like he is kind of known to be able to perform as of late and he's the only Korean in this group so he's kind of expected to go through but with the way that Zanst has been kind of up and coming lately and the way that Kane's, you know, he got a round of eight in the previous season so it's a tough group and he might not make it out so it's, it, it, yeah, it's going to be an exciting one to see play out. Well, let's uh, talk about our first matchup then. Zanster versus Kane. Sweden versus Canada in this one. What are your uh, initial thoughts when looking at this? Is this uh, a close series or not a close series? I feel like, in general, if you look at the group and how both players should perform, maybe I will rate Kane a little bit higher than Zanster. But in the head-to-heads, it's going to come down to CVC. And Zanster is actually, I think, pretty good in the matchup. He won uh, a few Swedish championships off the back of his CVC. And I do think that maybe he's going to be slightly favored. Kane, though, is a lot more of a regular in WCS. And in the past, he surprised us many times with some big performances. I think we all remember back in Poitiers, the run that he had. So uh, maybe, maybe Kane still has it in him. Even, he's playing better, maybe, even than before. Since he has retired, you know what to do next season, Bing, right? <laughs> yeah, the, the natural progression from playing. Uh, let's, let's continue talking about Kane a little bit. 22 years old, from Canada, um, retired in July, uh, a couple months back now. Was still good enough to make it through challenges to play into Premier League, and who's going to say no to $4,500, as we looked at before? Um, a great talent that did have that fantastic run in Season 1, managed to get to Top 8. That's a, a wonderful result to have. Uh, and then, of course, uh, not quite as good in Season 2, around a 32 finish, but he's back again, Sam. Yeah, Kane's a funny one because in 2014, he was a consistent challenger player. He wasn't quite making the breakthrough performances like he did in 2015. And in 2015, when he did move over to Europe and start practicing on the European ladder, maybe where it's a bit better, uh, the practice environment's a little bit better for him, he started posting those results. and. Suddenly he's just retired when he started getting those results. Yeah. I feel like it's kind of a waste of a talent, in my opinion. I feel like he could definitely progress a lot further. So um, I definitely feel like he can still make it out of this group, but he hasn't really been practicing too much, so we're going to have to see how it plays out. He did beat Huck in Challenger, another fellow retired player slash commentator, <laughs> so not too bad. <laughs> Got a lot of those around recently. Uh, but let's focus <laughs> our uh, minds on the next player hits. Zanster, a young Swedish player who's for the first time now made it into Premier League. He's played in Challenger a couple of times in the past, but he's finally broken through in a match in Challenger that he lost previously last year against Firecake. Yeah, uh, it seems to somehow have worked a lot in the matchup, and that really showed some of these games were actually crazy entertaining. We can only hope that today we're going to have uh, similar scenarios happening here as well. And uh, yeah, Zanster, I do think that's his EVZ is really something that we should look out for here in this group because he could do a lot of damage in that match. I mean, Zans has been traveling a lot recently. I looked at this uh, before. He's been absolutely all over the place in the last couple of months, traveling to many different countries from, from France to Spain to Finland. He went over to Toronto recently as well. Now he's back in Cologne. Surely that's got to have some type of effect on him today. It's going to have some effect, but I think another thing to note as well is that he actually lost his gear coming back from Toronto. So he spent all day yesterday, he said he spent seven hours trying to relocate or find uh, another mouse that he could use to play for today. So his head's going to be a bit, uh, maybe not so as focused as he'd like, but at the same time, he's been getting that uh, tournament experience and kind of been able to adapt to that setting. So. Kane, he's a bit nervous. Zanster, maybe a bit more comfortable. Well, Kane, like you said, is such a good talent here. And, you know, you can't play bad against this guy because he can still very easily beat Zanster today. But you've got to be looking at Zanster as the, the favorite. He's the competitor right now. He's the more competitive one. He's the one traveling. He's the one competing. Kane's a student. Kane doesn't really practice as much as, or as what he said. Yeah, at the same time, it's like the classical matchup of like, having more experience in the main household biggest tournaments like WCS against the guy who's more on form. Mm. And I guess 
that you could describe more, a lot more as like rising in the scene, because Zenster is definitely one of those names, you know, that even though it's been around for a very long time, never really had any, I think, outstanding results to, to speak for it. Yeah. And definitely in that season has the potential to, to go for one of those if he was to go far. All right, well, let's take a look at the map vetoes. We've got that finally done now with the players. They've eliminated two maps each, and we have three maps that we will go to. Uh, and we'll bring that up for you guys in a quick second here. As you can see, it's Coda, Iron Fortress, and Dash, and Terminal, if take need be, to that third. Bling, take it away. Well, it's kind of funny because Iron Fortress, <laughs> <laughs> Iron Fortress is a map that I was speaking to Pig about it actually, and Iron Fortress is a map that you can play a few different styles on it as ZVZ, and Zanster actually really favours the Zergling upgrade style. Uh, he likes to skip on roaches entirely, so the fact that he picked that map. I feel like that's definitely going to be his focus point and his go-to build. But at the same time, if Kane's kind of uh, realized that as well, he might be able to kind of counter it with a Roach Bane type play. And it might be a bit of a surprise for Zanster to go up against. How crazy is uh, a Dash and Terminal the last day? The first map is going to be Iron Fortress um, that we've got up here. Uh, but Dash and Terminal, is that a crazy map, Todd? That I don't think so. It's like a map where, personally, I feel like you get scouted very easily on and then the opponent always kind of know what you're doing in CVZ. The same thing's gonna apply. So, yep. I don't. I'm Protoss, man. Come on. Let's okay. Well, uh, yeah. I thought the second map here, Coda being the first map. Um, you've got to get your final thoughts on this matchup. Then uh, I, I want to get to the predictions. We'll get to that very, very shortly here. Here we go. Are we again. expecting an ex explosive series between these two? I mean, Zerg versus Zerg can be very explosive, but at the same time, if you want to drag it out, you can do that. I think quite possibly. Yeah. Uh, I think there is also the potential, like, it's going to be very entertaining, and that could be through some explosive games, yes. Uh, I feel like it depends more a little bit on Kane, depending on what he thinks is best here, because Kane is... It's funny to think that the more experienced player is going to be more the wild card one, because we don't really know what to expect out of him, we don't know how much he's practiced, so definitely has the potential to be. All right, uh, predictions then. Go on, Todd. You first. What? No, why, why doesn't Blink go first? He always just, he's just going to disagree with me anyway. <laughs> okay. Actually, no, I, I want to go first. <laughs> you do? Okay. Go. Actually, uh, okay, I it's go no big deal, man. Okay, okay you know boys, what? game is ready. Cheeky I'm, prediction. Is I'm going to say Zenster wins 2-1. I'm saying 2-0 Zenster. Okay, thank you very much, gentlemen. It's time to head to the commentary team for this one. It's going to be Kolaris and Pig. Interesting predictions there. Can he do it? As already in Challenger, as I say, taking that 3-0 over Firecake looked extremely formidable. And for Zanster here, one of his first proper, proper appearances in Premier League, is yeah. he's got to be able to try and get, get some wheels working here. I have no... I mean, if you look at Zanster, we've seen his name around the scene for a while, right? And he's, he's the Swedish champion. Yeah. It's about time he broke into Premier League. And I mean, it's, it's always that, that first moment, right? You're here, you're like, I did it. And you can imagine his elation when he beat uh, beat Firecake, got his mm. revenge from the previous season. I think he's really uh, really looking to kind of drive this one home. I, I know first time I was ever in his shoes, your first time in Premier League, you want to make it count, man. Yeah, yeah, you do, you do. And, well, right now he certainly has a shot, I believe, in this group, uh, for sure. Mm. Uh, he has a very, very good shot. His Zerg versus Zerg looked on point and formidable. That being said, though, Kane on the other side, in this kind of semi-retired kind of state that he's in, at the moment, uh, looking for you know a little bit of a little bit of money here and there in the WCS system. Still, always a big threat. Still, always a dangerous opponent. As we get into our first best of three of the day here for the World Championship Series, and we do load up on Dakota as we have spawned down to the bottom right-hand corner in the blue. It is Kane. Let's see how he can perform today. See if you can move on, as we do have spawning up to the top left here in the corner here. Our Red Zerg representing Team Property, it is Zanster. Really impressed me in Challenger. Yeah. One, of the, one of the best Zerg versus Zerg games I have ever seen, ever had the pleasure of casting against Firecake on Bridgehead, and I will never forget it. He's such a talented young player, Ooh. and... Uh, Ooh, very fast uh, nine pool coming out here from Kane. Interesting move. So you're going to be able to put on some really early pressure with this. Uh, probably not necessarily an all-in. Depends what he does want to do behind that. But you can already see Kane's mindset and wanting to get in Zanster's face. And yeah. this is something I was actually I was about to start talking about. Was this idea of Zanster played a fantastic kind of standard uh, opening games, but he was playing against Firecake, who's really a player who sits back in the early game and mm -hmm. lets you get in your comfort zone. And because Zanster was playing so. Strong, 
stylistically, I was wondering, is Kane going to look at those games? And is he going to think to himself, look, I'm going to just put the pressure on you early. I'm going to find those weak points in your builds. I've studied your VODs. I'm going to try and take advantage. Yeah, and for the most part, Zanster Thrice Challenger Series was playing the very heavy kind of melee style, right? For, uh, yeah. Which is a little more more uncommon than other Zer kind of go-to Roach mid-game styles. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's almost uh, quite vulnerable at certain points, I believe. Like, it's really powerful if you don't expect it coming yeah. or if it gets a bit of tempo going because you've got such fast units. But we're not even going to get to that point before the fighting starts in this game. Now, luckily for Zanster, he has gone for a pool before Hatchery opening himself. Mm. He's basically said, I'm going to play the safest possible style I know. And he's already got his Overlord started on 14 supply. This is the safest way you can play your opening as Zanster. And now spotting those Zerglings, he's in a great position, building six Zerglings of his own, he's going to be able to deflect this attack quite comfortably. Yep, should be okay. Uh, gases are being taken on the other side here for Kane whilst he's going uh, towards things. I think it is just going to have a little bit of uh, gas coming on in while this initial assault is going on. He will start working on the natural hatch rate, uh, but at the same time, just wanting to force the cancellation. Drones even come off the line here for Zanster to try and fend this off with the aid of the Zerglings. That hatchery has taken a lot of damage. Now, Zanster just needs to buy buy time for more links to come out, buy time for his queen to get down here. Kane, because there's so many drones, he's going to have a tough time taking a front-on engagement. Look at this, he's just mm. trying to waste the mining time. He knows he can't commit unless he can get a really good angle. So he's hunting right now. He wants to find that good concave of the Zerglings, but Zanster's so far very calm at denying that. Extra drone's going to be popping out here very soon. Going into Zanster's first-person view as he will have those drones continuing to mine in this location. He now has still plenty of links here to help this out. Nice micro back there with just one ling alone. Didn't even decide to bring his queen down. He's more he's happy with the amount of links he has at the front. Mm, a very clean defense from Zanster, playing just so safe there. A lot of players would have squeezed in an extra drone even uh, when going that pool first build, but he just played that exceptionally safe. And uh, Kane here, though, you've got to remember, he delayed a lot of mining time from Zanster. He's got his link speed started earlier, and he has got his own hatchery down now. So Kane is going to have a little bit more mobility advantage, and if we look at the work account, it's actually dead even. So Kane's playing this out in a very solid manner. Didn't get over eager and did not throw his Zerglings away. Is there any room here, though, for Zanster to claim a small uh, advantage of it? Uh, well, we do say that, hold the phone, because these lings went very aggressive against that queen, and a lot are bruised up, so he's going to have to run away. So is there room here for Zanster with the double hatcheries during this window where he does claim himself an advantage, but then does he have to play a little bit more defensive after that? Where does where does Zanster go from here? Zanster tends to have a little bit more lava, just a little bit more drones, a little bit more money, but because Kane has his faster link speed mm. and he has more information, we do see Kane kind of in the driver's seat in terms of he gets to choose what happens next. Notice Zanster now has to fall back into that defensive posture and look at this link speed kicking in for Kane. No spines down, no extra queens. He's going to take a very nice little engagement against those Zerglings. Mm. And Zanster's just trying to wait for his link speed to kick in in about 15 seconds' time. Yeah, and those links really going to be able to try and power on forwards into the main base here, looking for drone kills, but the queen pops out, denying them that good position. He needs to move his queen back to safety. Doesn't want that to get surrounded in the middle of nowhere. Baneling nest going down, and more and more links on the way for Zanster. He has been able to thwart this without taking many losses. Yeah, and Kane is very far down in that Zergling count now. He's up three drones. He's been droning hard behind this, but seeing, oh, wow, this is such a fast link speed out of Zanster. He's kind of going to himself, okay, pull back, drop that Baneling Nest, and he's got to get in a defensive stance because this is a big Zergling advantage for Zanster. Yeah, quite a lot indeed. They're going to be able to push on up, and actually that first queen is almost very, about to die off. Doesn't die off just yet, though. Still more links floating on forwards. Very, very close in the numbers, but what was able to win out in the very end there is Zanster. If get some drones, that would be fantastic. Oh, forcing that natural to be evacuated. The Zergling's flooding in only a few at a time, and it looks like Zanster's Whoa. actually getting some surrounds on these units. A queen goes down. It looks like he has the surround on the other queen. He's going to pick that off. Because Kane needs more Zerglings out, and he needs them out right now. He's lost both queens. Yeah, those being killed off means that the lava's going to be limited. Not as easy to get your access to the Zerglings. He did seek the Bane towards the back. He's thrown his own down. While this has been going on, has Zanster. So technically, he can fall back and have a, a pretty decent advantage from here. Mm, the one one thing that Kane didn't pick up in the information early was when that gas went down, because he just stayed at the natural, he kind of assumed, I think, that Zanster's link speed would be further delayed. Looked like it caught him just a little bit by surprise, and he didn't quite have the link numbers. Now, Kane, he realizing ah. the situation he's in, he's on non-stop Zergling production, he's morphing a lot of Banelings here. Kane wants to go in and get some big damage done. He wants to equalize, he wants to kill some drones here. Yeah, but already the defensive Banelings have morphed in here for Zanster. 
right on the ramp as well. This one morphing in will be a two for two trade. Another one moves forward. The Queen's going to be able to clean up the rest of the wounded ones. That was a brilliant little trade there for Zanster in the end. Like three bailings for five. Tomorrow going to morph in. They are kind of pinned up against this. That's oh, very careful. Oh, Kane getting a good surround there. Catching a lot of the Zerglings with that Baneling hit. Oh, oh, very nice pullback. His Baneling slips through the crack and just blows up all of Zanster's. And Kane diving into the base. Yeah. Kane is getting a bit YOLO here. He wants to go in and do some damage, but he might get trapped inside this base. It was one of his best opportunities with the lack of Zerglings or even the Banelings didn't have the mobility to really be able to catch up to it. But he's going to be able to sandwich him in and clean up a lot of those Zerglings. Kane still looking for drone kills, but I don't think there's any to be found here anymore. Mm, looks like Kane's realized he can't get any more damage done. He started rebuilding his queens back at home. Uh, his second one still hasn't popped and he is morphing four Banelings, putting down his spine. He's looking like he just wants to drone up in the economy game and play defensive. But because Zanster has all these Zerglings mm. he's built for defense, he's got a really big counter pressure and all of the all of the effort is on Kane here. He needs to hang on with much less numbers oh. and behind this catch up. Splits up some of those Zerglings towards the front. I think that was like two Zerglings for one Baneling there as the first trade. Needs to buy time with these Banelings because obviously Zanster with all of these units putting on a lot of threat and Kane really didn't have much lava to work with up until these queens have just popped. So Banelings are going to trickle through. Oh. He will go for the trade. And this is not even a huge investment from Zanster. He's just trying to take good trades here and he does. He's forced so many Banelings out. He's forced all of Kane's gas into Banelings defensively. And look at behind this. We do see a lair finishing up very soon for Zanster. We see him banking gas ready to drop down a fast Spire. And he's just in a very nice position. Up eight drones. Even a Zergling getting up into around the back Oof. of Kane's natural seas. Hey, Kane's taking extra gases. He doesn't even have that many drones. He can be kind of comfortable here thinking, looks like Kane just isn't going to be able to attack him. He's just going to try and catch up. And the few times we saw Zamster actually go for mutalisks in the past, I felt like they've usually been, I just want to force out spore crawlers. I just want to force you to play the defensive game and then transition on. And he does even see the layer morphing in and the extent to which it's morphed in up towards the top. So surely Zamster's in a great spot at the moment. Now he's got to feel so happy when you're like ahead 30 seconds with a spy. You feel great. In this case, he's going to be ahead about 50 or more Ooh. seconds. He's going to be I... so far ahead. Kane actually seeing that spy, he's got to feel his heart sink a little bit. Knowing he's going to be so far behind in those mutalisks popping, he doesn't have a third base down. Kane needs to play the next few minutes pristinely. He somehow needs to buy time with Zerglings, take some really good trades, and find a way to put pressure back on Zansa. And wow, look at that production tab. We actually yeah. see an infestation pit. Kane knows he can't catch up with the Spire tech. He's just going to go two base investors by the look of things. That's a very, very early infestation bit for this kind of stage of the game. And well, considering what he's going to have to do, I'm going to have to have um, fungals landing on these mutalisks. Even sometimes it just doesn't work. Sometimes it just doesn't work. You just miss those fungals. And then what are you supposed to do? But this pressure here from Zanster trying to force extra gas my, uh, being spent here for Kane. Surely this is doing wonders right now. Oh, look at that. Just goes right into the main base. The Banelings can't catch up. There's no Zerglings out for Kane. And the Lings are running into that drone line. Oh, does get a nice Baneling hit there for Kane. And oh, another one of Kane's Banelings actually just blowing up uh, there near the hatchery. There's still a lot of Zerglings in here. This is just disrupting everything. And yeah. behind this, Zanster is so free to drone up. He's adding his Mutalisks. He's got his third base finishing up. Zanster is just pushing himself further and further ahead. He's not giving Kane any time to recover. Didn't have a great opportunity to see that infestation pit, with, but with eight or nine mutalisks on the way and him taking his third behind this, technically the third's been spotted, but what do you really do against that? Unless he makes a flood of zerglings and keeps the mutalisks on the other side of the map, I, I don't think there's much that he can do against it for now, right? No, I mean, it's so difficult here. Uh, you know, Kane is he's getting melee upgrades, so it looks like he does want to head down that, you know, just infestors, queens, zerglings, and probably heading for ultras or broodlords at some point far down the track, but right now his problem is getting a third base. And just defending yeah. these mutas, a single spore in the main. Like, this is not a lot of defense. He's really banking on these infestors, but they're not out yet. And with no burrow finished yet, I mean, if these mutalisks are on top of those infestors when they pop out, things could turn sour very quickly. Yeah, the, the burrow is one of the linchpins, actually. The links are going to run up into the main again here whilst the mutalisks try and buy some time towards the front. Sees the infestors now, and he's got to be a little bit worrisome about that. But with the burrow on the way, if infestors can kind of take these by surprise, that would be fantastic. Don't think they're even going to get an opportunity, though. He's already on this mineral line. That one spore crawler isn't doing much. It's up to the queens, but he's going to turn around and take the fight with those. Fungal's going to go down on them. And at the same time, some mutalisks are on top of those infestors anyway. 
Oh, look at this. Zanston knows he's got so much money to play with. He can afford to trade out here, and he catches the Infestors when they don't have enough anti-air oh. support. Just a couple of Queens kills all of the Infestors, only loses a few Middlesks, and he's got a 60 drone economy behind this. He's got three bases mining. Zanston's at that point where he knows he's ahead, and he's going to exert that pressure. He's just going to yeah. keep on pushing it in Kane's face and say, I'm not going to give you time to catch up with some sneaky Infestor play with some Ling run buys. I am just going to keep on pushing in here and taking advantage of every hole in your defenses. And, you know, we, what we saw from Zanster in Challenger could have potentially, that's a good fungal actually, to be able to lock these down, so getting a few extra kills himself here. Uh, but what we saw from him in Challenger was that heavy melee style could have come back to bite him if he was to use that over and over and over. I think you were talking about it before we even came on broadcast. But here, it's not the same style. It's him just kind of playing to what he sees at the moment and playing it well. Exactly. Having that flexibility is so important when you're competing at this level. And being able to just so smoothly defend that early pool going into the Mutalisks is going to be great. But, ooh, Kane coming in with a really mm. nice Ling run by here, taking advantage of the immobility of those roaches. They don't have their roach speed yet. Kane trying to get some damage on the backside. He really needs to make something happen. Borrowing some Shark Festers across the map mm. as well. But a uh, few of these Lings going down, not getting that much done. Kane's in a very desperate position right now. These, yeah. these Infestors, they need to like get 40 drones down with Chain Fungals or something. They need to do something massive. And even then, how do you hang on against this ball of roaches moving across? I don't know. He's going to be at like 30 or 40 roaches uh, by the time anything is even on the other side. This is a ridiculous amount of units. He's trying to get, Kane's trying to get melee upgrades at this moment, um, but and these spines are going to try and hold on against that many roaches? I think it's a very tall order. Oh, actually, very nice timing with the spines finishing up just barely in time. Dropping Infested Terrans in huh. the natural at the same time. Hasn't managed to drop them in the main. A lot of these roaches are starting to go down. Can Kane hang on, though, as more and more roaches flood in? Uh, the Infested Terrans are going to be cleaned up at one location. Main base, not so much, but at the same time, these spines can only do so much against that many roaches. Another spine crawler is going to get focused down. The drones got pulled off line here as well for Kane. He is down a hundred or so supply at the moment and <laughs> That's going to be all she wrote. It's very, very difficult to recover from this kind of spot with these roaches on your doorstep. Really nice attempt to come back here from Kane, but it looks like his first game here in the round of 32 is going to be slipping away. Zanster just so comfortable, so calm, and uh, not really giving away any edges. Just looks so confident in his play style throughout this. And he's just going to push in here. Being so decisive, it's really, really confident boosting. When you, you play yeah. a game like this, it's your first game of the day, and everything just seems to go right. You don't really show any weakness. Zanster's got to be in a really good mindset as he forces Kane out of that game. There you go. GG for game one. Zanster takes it after, uh, you know, strong last year of the matchup, to be honest with you. Uh, being able to react to how Kane was playing in that game out and just being able to lock down his defenses and then transition from there. I just... No, I can't really fault anything that Zanster really did in that game, to be honest. I can't either. I mean, you can see it in his face as well. You can see that sort of confidence. He just looked very calm and happy. Kane, on the other hand, I mean, you got to remember, Kane had, has a lot more stage experience than yes. uh, Zanster. And, uh, I mean, season one this year, he was top eight uh, at the season finals over in Poitiers. And you can see a bit of a smile on his face. Kane knows what went wrong in that game. He kind of looks at it and... Being the experienced pro gamer he is, I'm sure he's saying to himself, you know what, he had he had the advantage from the start. He did choose like the most safe pool first opening. Mm. He got such a fast overlord. The moment he saw the Zerglings, he had like his lava saved up and everything. It was so, so pristine from Zanster. And uh, and then, you know, Kane, of course, took a little bit of damage from that counter attack. And uh, from there, Zanster didn't let up. He said, oh, oh, I grabbed a little edge. And from there, he was just pushing left and right, just kind of shoving Kane about. Well, that is it for game number one. We are going to go to a short break. And when we are back, it will be Zanster versus Kane here for the World Championship Series.
Welcome back to the World Championship Series as we're going to get into Iron Fortress for game number two. And Kane, a player who has been a champion over in America in the past, uh, is looking to try and go deep here in the round of 32. But it will be difficult. He has been dropped into quite the group here with the likes of Zanster, a young upcomer, realistically, here in the European scene, finding his spot in Premier. And now we move on to Iron Fortress here. Pig. Yeah, it's such an interesting matchup between these two players. Or here in Iron Fortress, you can see the third base locations are just so far spread out. And as, uh, of course, you were saying before, and uh, uh, Bling was, of course, on the analysis desk, going to really play to Zanster's strengths this map. I think there's a very high likelihood of seeing those upgraded Zerglings. All right, let's get into it. Game number two, spawning up to the top left, we have our blue Zerg. Presenting Canada, it is Kane. Trademark Kane smile there. Always enjoying himself. <laughs> Ever since he's, uh, you know, semi-retired, he started uh, playing just for fun, looking really strong. But he's got to get through this guy. Yep, up to the top right-hand corner, we have our Red Zerg. Represented team property, it is Zanster. High hopes for that kid today. Yeah, I mean, you know, Zanster's been around for a while, and sometimes you see this kind of very quick rise to the... The prominence, someone like a uh, Lilbo, I, I say very quick. I mean, you've got to remember these these esports athletes here with StarCraft. It's such a mm. complex game. You don't see someone go from being a, a guy on ladder in you know Master League to a pro gamer in six months. You see someone like Lilbo. It's actually been quite a fast rise from the start of 2014 is when we started really noticing him just a little bit. Yeah. And then suddenly he's you know making finals of WCS with Zanster. He's been climbing a little bit slower. Yes. Um, but he's been doing very well in the Swedish scene. Two-time champion over at uh, of course esports. SM and uh, really wanting to to continue that and actually take it international because he's, he's a champion at home and he wants to actually be in the Premier League. Sweden traditionally is one of the strongest countries when it mm. comes to StarCraft 2. He wants to represent them well. That's true. And if he wants to represent Sweden as well as the other countries that are currently representing here in the World Championship Series, he's got quite the tall order on his hands. There aren't that many Swedish representatives anymore in the World Championship Series, whereas the likes of France, the likes of Germany, all overtaking them and kind of toppling their reign here. So Zanster, he's he's kind of that fresh upcomer who really could put Sweden on the map eventually, especially if he lives up to some of the games we've seen of him recently, because they have been very good. Mm, absolutely. And interestingly, here on Iron Fortress, we are going to see Zanster get the lucky first scout. And his overlord, as it comes in, it's actually going to reveal that Kane has done a 14 gas, 14 pool mm. build. What that means is it's a really fast Zergling speed. Doesn't even have an expansion down yet. And Zanster's going to see those Zerglings pop. Now, luckily for Kane, he wasn't choosing to do any sort of all-in with it. I mean, that would just be foiled by Zanster spotting it. But he is actually planning to take an expansion and just do a bunch of Zergling pressure. But it's still very unfortunate for Kane because now Zanster sees, hey, there's no gas mining. You're not going all in with this. So he can get like a minimum level of defense and then just drone as much as he wants. All right. Well, let's see how this is going to be set up. Kane has finally spotted uh, this hatchery over to the right-hand side. So at least his lings are going to get over there nice and fast. They'll start working away on this hatchery, but Zanster already has a few lings in production. Kane realizing that he's not going to get much done with that. We'll just back off for now with the Queen also moving up quite far forwards, mm. wanting to make sure that these aren't going to get anything done. Kane just wants to make sure that Zanster's not being super greedy and not even building Zerglings there. Yeah. They're poking into the main. But oh, Zanster actually going to trap some of Kane's Oof. lings, getting a lot of damage done to them. One of Kane's lings already goes down. And Kane's lings are so valuable. You have to keep in mind, he doesn't have as much lava behind this. He doesn't, doesn't have as much economy. His natural's still not finished. And he he's every Zergling's so valuable. And Zanster making a lot of Zerglings, more than I was really expecting here to try and fend this off uh, with Tons more in production, 14 or so were there. Did he cancel some oh, of those? Oh, so many Zerglings. I don't think he did. I'm not 100% okay. sure, but that is a lot of Zerglings yeah. out. Kane spotted it now. Kane's building a spine at home. He's building more speedlings. So he should have that information so in time many. to be ready for this. Kane is actually up four drones right now off a, a less lava, less economy opening. So Zanster here has a huge Zergling lead. 20 more lings are in production. He's yeah. going up to 45 Zerglings versus just the 23 of Kane. And this is going to be really insane to hold. Kane needs to 
have good queen positioning. He's coming off his ramp with those queens. They're going to have a uh, lot of surface area. This is really dangerous for Kane. Uh, he's going to be able to just fend them off for now, thanks to the Zerglings kind of pulling back slightly there to try and push them away. But still a lot of Zerglings going to flood on forwards. It looks like Xanta is confident with this kind of number that he has here to try and battle on against this. And he actually ripped apart a lot of those Zerglings. He still has 30 left. That's going to be GG. Whoa! Blisterer of a game. And Zanster is able to take it 2-0. It was as clean cut as that pick. Such a decisive counter-attack from Zanster, realizing the build order he was up against and already having quite a fast gas himself. He said, you know what? Not only is this going to keep me safe from your aggression, but I am just going to counter-attack hard because he knows Kane has a real bare-bones framework there. Mm. Zanster instinctively, he felt it. He just said to himself, you know what? You're going to be try you're gonna try to be greedy behind this. You're not going to drop a Baneling there straight away. I am going to follow this up with that big counter-attack. And you could see Kane's positioning, his numbers, they just weren't quite perfect. And, and he really really needed the perfect defense to hang on against those numbers. Yeah, that was that was uh, very, very decisive there for Zanster. So he now moves on to the winner's match where he'll be waiting for Ayosonu or, of course, 4GG. Both of which, you know, <laughs> when it comes to 4GG, for example, he's a menace in this group, to be honest. He's, oh, yeah. he's going to be the one that all the Zergs are trying to gun for. But can they bring him down? Because he's a he's a big monster in this group. Yeah, it's going to be a real tough uh, tough match, and it is interesting because it isn't necessarily a given that uh, Four G does make it to that winners match. Mm. Iasonu as well, uh, very powerful, and I think you got to get to pick up some confidence there as Ansta, though. Quick yeah. win like that, he's going to be going into it smiling. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Very, very good start here for Zanster, the kid who is looking to have a very strong initial kind of appearance here uh, in Premier League. I don't think he's been here for a very, very long time, or if at all. Uh, so it's nice to see Zanster gaining some traction already, getting some wins under his belt and looking to push on. Do you think Zanster has high hopes here going through the group? I think he definitely does. And uh, I'd like to hear some more from the boys in the analysis desk, actually. So, yeah. Sean, take it away. Thank you very much, Pig. Welcome back to the analysis desk. A very swift 2-0 and a fantastic debut here for Zanster in the Premier League. 2-0 instantly, and it was over before he could even start to think about what could happen in this matchup. Um, that last map, though, Kane, really unfortunate the way the scouting works on a four-player map like that, and he chose a build that was risky, gambled, and that's the price of StarCraft sometimes, Sam. And he was definitely vocal about it, as we could hear in the audience. I don't know if, you, I don't know if people at home heard it, but... Uh, I don't think they did. I don't think uh, I don't think that got picked up. But we well, definitely did. What did he say? Audio, um, well, the F word. You know, he uh, wasn't happy. Yeah, he wasn't happy. As, as soon as uh, the overlords crossed paths and he was spotted, he cursed. I mean, he got a bit unfortunate in both maps, really, though, to be honest. In the first map, he was kind of hoping that Zanster was going to go for that hatch first, which he didn't. And then in the second map, obviously, getting a bit unfortunate with the scouting path. So. Yeah, I feel a little bit bad for Kane, but at the same time, Zanster was just playing safe and solid, so well played to him. Yeah, there's not too much to really talk about with that series there, Todd, but, you know, it's a good well, confidence we, boost, really, for, for Zanster. We can talk about the fact I hyped Kane a lot during the <laughs> today's intro. And, <laughs> and it was over in 10 uh, minutes. It's but. just one series. He, he, he'll be back stronger for sure, you know, like sometimes... It just seems like uh, the stars are lining for you to fail in everything that you're doing. I know all about it, and sadly for Kane, it's perhaps was one of the series here, I think. Do, do you think Zanza doesn't really take much away from this? I mean, he's just like, okay, that was nice and easy, kind of expected that all. Does he take anything at all? He probably anticipated to, that he was going to win no matter what, so I don't think he, there's too much thinking about what just happened. If I was Zanster, I'd already be thinking about the very likely scenario of meeting 4 GG in the next match and studying him against Zerg. Okay, well, thank you very much, gentlemen. We're going to head to a very quick break, but when we return, it's time for Korea versus China. Ayasonu takes on 4GG.